So in this movie we're gonna talk a little about how to compare two means and especially we're gonna go through it in our in the last movie we went through the mathematics and the statistics of the t-test and so we will skip that for this one but we're gonna use the cookbook presented at the last part of the movie to show you how this is done uh, in R. So the cookbook goes like this. First you take your data and you visualize it. Then you consider any transformation of data and then you evaluate whether the standard deviation is similar or different between the group, two groups. This point 0.2 and point 0.3 is an iterative process because the purpose of the transformation is to handle extreme samples on the one side and on the other one is to get um, the standard deviation to be as similar as possible between the group, two groups in order to utilize the t-test with equal variances to gain a more powerful test. Then we identify whether the observations are paired and we make a confidence interval and a test for the possibility of the difference being zero and then we comment on the results. So let's go into our... So what I have here is some wine samples. I have 27 observations. There are two classes, two countries, um, Australia and Chile. So the data looks like this. And then there is a bunch of aroma components measured by DCMS. So the one that we're interested in, in this case, is ethyl acetate. So the first thing we do is we plot this data. We utilize here the ggplot2 function, the qplot. The data is the y data. We would like to see the two countries, so that's our x-axis. And then we would like to see ethyl acetate, which is this guy. So if we plot this, we'll get a plot like this. We would like to decorate it a little, so we would like to show it as a box plot. So that's a box plot. And what we see here is that there are some extreme samples for the Chile part. One which is very low, one which is very high. Not the case for Australia. On top of this box plot, we put a jitter plot in order to be able to visualize the individual observations. And that is possible because we do not have more than 27 samples. So we do that in this way. What you see here is that you will have double up on some of the samples. So this, was, this sample was plotted from the box plot and then it's repeated here in the data plot. And you should be aware of this, um, that, that the ddplot2 functionality does this. Um, so you will have double up on the samples which are shown in both uh, arguments entered, so both the box plot and the data plot. We can make this more, this one even more uh, nice by putting some some color on it, and and you can do even more fancy stuff. Um, but this is our raw data, a representation of our raw data. We would like to to consider according to the cookbook, whether to use any transformation. And it's pretty easy to do by simply just chucking in the transformation. So instead of having the raw values, you take the logarithm of them and repeat the plot. You'll see that it looks pretty similar in the two cases. Maybe you get a little more spread of uh, the lower ones compared to the upper ones. The other option is the square root option. Um, which do not change the data dramatically. So for now we just stick with the raw data um, and then try to see if the standard deviation between the two groups, so what we'd like to calculate is the standard deviation on this one and we would like to do it for the two groups and the two groups are specified by the country and then it's a standard deviation. So what we get here is that we get a standard deviation of 1.2 for Australia and 0.8 for Chile. 
you see that I use the aggregate function in order to get standard deviations uh, in one line for two different uh, samples specified by the wine country. Obviously, you can calculate the standard deviation by using the standard deviation formula. This one, that's the standard deviation of all the samples. And if you want it for only one uh, country, then you simply specify that and you will get exactly the same. Standard deviation for Chile is the same as what you calculate in using the aggregate function. Okay, so here we see that we have uh, 1.2 and 8.4, so slightly higher standard deviation for Australia compared to Chile. If we do a log transform on these guys, we see that we change the relation between the two standard deviations slightly and the square root. Here it's actually even worse compared to the untransformed. So I would say that these are not orders of magnitude different. 1.2 at 8 point and 0 0.8 is not an order of magnitude, it's it's 30%. So it's not really dramatically in terms of can I utilize the 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 t-test with the variance homogeneity uh, and I would say that we can do that. So we can do the t-test now according to the cookbook. Um, oh, we need to identify whether the observations are paired. There's nothing in this case where the observations are paired. There's no such thing as this one being connected to this one. Um, there's no relation. So it's not paired observations from this kind of design. Then we make a confidence interval. Make a confidence interval for the difference. And in this case, we're simply going to use the t-test, the built-in function for calculating the confidence interval. So the way we do it is we make a model. So we say, well, wine, the, the response variable, ethyl acetate is a function of the country. So this is the t-test. So let's just see how that goes. So here it says that it do the wealth two sample t-test that is actually assuming that the variances are not equal. It calculates a t statistics, a test statistics, some degrees of freedoms, and a p-value. And then it gives you a confidence interval for the differences between the means. So 0 0.01 minus 0 0.01 to 1.7. Now I actually consider that the variance between the two groups are equal. So I would like to force them to be equal. By default, R, the t-test in R is um, at default, it is assuming that the variances are not equal, producing the wealth two sample t test. But now I would like to do the version where it's equal. So I I do that because I have looked at the standard deviations and they are not extremely different in this case. So here I calculate um, the test where assuming the variances being equal test statistics, degrees of freedom, and a p-value. And what you see here is that you gain a slightly more powerful test, which is basically due to that the degrees of freedom is slightly higher. Also, the test statistics is a little different compared to this one. And you get a confidence interval, in this case, from 0 0.03 up to 1.67. Um, you can see that the confidence interval here is from positive to positive without uh, the value zero in it. And uh, in this case, you have a confidence interval from negative to positive containing zero. And what you see is that the p-value up here is also above 0 0.05. This is a 95% confidence interval. So these two 
if you see a p-value above 0.05, you will know that zero is within the confidence interval at a 95% confidence interval level. In the case down here, you see that zero is not a part of it, and the p-value is also less than 0.05. So the two uh, measures go in line, the p-value and the confidence interval. If we want to repeat this, well, we just say, well, let's try to do it where we have log transformed our data. Then we can do that. It doesn't seem to change very much on the level of significance. If we do it for the square root, we get the same story.